Hey there! In this video, we're going to be exploring the new Air Step module, which is part of the Vector Bundle. The Air Step module allows you to harness the power of wave sequencing inside of Voltage Modular, but with a few added twists. So first off, what is wave sequencing? Wave sequencing is a form of synthesis that was popularized in the late 80s and throughout the 90s, and what this allows you to do is take a sequence of waves that are typically sampled and scroll through them over time. So this module allows us to create a complex sequence of waves that can create really rich harmonic sounds or textural droning elements you can add to your patches. And you can even sit down and program a fully functional song inside of this by going one step at a time. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the AirStep module so you can understand how to use it and create your own wave sequence patches. And then we'll be breaking down a wave sequence patch that's a generative, electronic, cool song. So let's hop in and take a look at AirStep. This is the AirStep module itself. If I bring in my wires here, this is just a basic patch of AirStep running into an amplifier, and then I've got an envelope generator here. If you take a look at the interface of AirStep, there's quite a few options and quite a few things going on, but it's actually pretty simple to use. As you can probably tell, and with the name, this module works in steps, so right now we just have one step and it's just a single waveform. If I play this right now, we're more or less going to get just a single cycle looping over and over and over. Let's take a listen. Really not that exciting, but where it gets interesting is when we start adding steps to this. If we go down here and select Add Step, we can add another step to this sequence. Each of these steps has a couple of parameters allowing us to select a waveform, or an external input, or just none. Then we can adjust the individual parameters, like the duration of that waveform, the crossfading, level, semitone tuning, fine tuning, and if it outputs a trigger, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail in a minute. Just to demonstrate this, let's go in and select a different waveform here and then give this a play. And you'll hear that it morphs between these two sounds, one of them being a choral sound and the other being a synth bass sound. Now, if we slow this down by utilizing the speed control here and maybe use the gate to restart the sequence, and then let's tune the second step up a fifth and play this again, you'll hear why this gets a bit more interesting than just a set of samples scrolling through one another. From here, we can continue adding steps up to four pages with 16 steps each, so you can get very, very complex sequences out of just this one module. The controls at the top act as the global control, so if we check this here to enable global control for the crossfade, we can turn this all the way up and then take another listen. <laughs> we could turn it all the way down for all steps. And this applies for all the other parameters, including duration, level, semitone tuning, fine tuning, and the triggers. In terms of the other parameters offered here, we have a frequency mod input, a position mod input, which controls the position of where it's at in the wave sequence. Over here, we have our external inputs for A and B. We have the output for the pitch, which will output the pitch of that step. So you could use this to run a sequence and then output the pitch CV to other modules if you had another oscillator or even another air step going. Next up, we have the trigger outputs here, trigger output A and B. So we have trigger A and B. We can check these to enable a trigger on that step. We'll be utilizing this in the patch I'll break down here in a moment, but that's all you really need to know for right now. Over here in the bottom right, we have the speed mod. So this allows you to input some CV to control the speed of the sequence. And if you want to sync this up, if you're using this maybe in your project at a certain tempo, you can use the external sync input over here. If you do use the external sync input, you'll want to make sure that the clock mode here is set to external. You can also set it to manual. You can adjust the initial position manually. You can enable if the sequence loops or not, and you can change the direction of the loop between forward, forward and back, and backwards. And that's a really quick summary of how AirStep and wave sequencing work. So let's take a look at a patch using AirStep in action. So here we are with the AirStep module in action. And as you can see, there's quite a bit going on here. And we're going to break this down one kind of layer at a time because it's pretty simple. There's just a lot of moving parts. Before we start breaking it down, let's turn up our master fader here and take a listen to the final result. And it's really, really cool. So what I've got in short is an AirStep, which is running all of the melodic content of this sequence. And then down here at the bottom, I've got my 909 kick and my 808 hats. And that's all that's happening in this patch. 
As you can probably imagine, this is a lot of fun to work with, and with this module, as I mentioned, you can basically make an entire song. Let's start breaking this patch down here with this top row. To begin, let's separate out a few of these elements just so we can have a little bit of a better look at the order of operations here. Like I said, this patch has a lot of moving parts, but it's relatively simple once you understand how things are flowing. To kick things off here, we've got our sync generator. So this is just outputting a steady BPM clock signal. So I routed the sync output of that into a sync divider here. The sync divider is set to eighth notes and then the clock out is going to the random task. The random task module more or less is a random voltage generator with a bit more specifics. And we'll be touching on that module in a bit more detail in a later video. But what I'm using this for is to generate the pitches and the notes of the sequence. So this is all generative. And the only thing I'm really having that's consistent is the drum pattern. The random task here goes with the CV range of five, so we get a wide variety of voltages to choose from, and that feeds into a quantizer, which is set to D minor pentatonic. What the quantizer does is it takes all this random data it's getting from random task and quantizes it to a scale. That way it's a musical result. If you don't have the quantizer, you're just gonna get a bunch of random notes, which can be fun, but you know, in this case, we want something that sounds a bit more musical and listenable. The quantizer here then feeds into a sample and hold, and we're going to talk about why that is in just a moment, but you want to feed your quantizer to the sample and hold, and then the output of the quantizer goes into the pitch CV of the air step. To make sure everything is in sync here, the external sync input of the air step is coming from the clock out of the sync divider as well. Now let's go ahead and hide the wires with control tab and just take a quick look at this sequence here. There's not all that much to know about it other than it's just 16 steps and I changed a couple of parameters. Obviously, with four different pages of 16 steps, you can get very, very detailed with your sequences, but I just did a quick 16 step sequence here and then enabled the global controls to up my duration, crossfade, and levels just to keep them consistent, but you could go in and fine tune this a bit more. The only control that's not global is the semitone tuning here. So I've got a couple notes that are up an octave. I've got one that's down an octave. I've got one up a fifth, another one up a fifth. And this was just experimenting until I found something that kind of had a bit more groove to it rather than just totally depending on the random task. And I find that even though it is totally generative, inputting just a couple more rules into how it plays out can just make things a bit more natural. Now that we've got everything set up in the air step here, we need to output it. So that is the out here. This is feeding into this amplifier, and this amplifier is being controlled by this envelope generator. Let's turn on our wires and take another look at what's happening here. Now that we've fed it into our amplifier and we've got our envelope generator, we need to make sure that our envelope generator is getting a gate signal. And there's a couple ways of doing this, but I found a way that I thought provided some more interesting results. The gate input here requires five volts to be triggered. So what I did instead of just relying totally on a straightforward sequence is use another random task. This random task module is receiving the clock input from a trigger to gate converter, and the trigger input here is coming from the air step module. The only thing I did is adjust the gate length to be relatively short, that way I'm making sure the envelope is triggered every time. The trigger to gate converter gets the triggers over here from A and B, and let's hide these wires because they're going to quite a few places. So I've got a trigger on A and B, so I've got my kick and my hat, my kick and my hat, my kick and my hat. And to make sure that it's going in time with the sequence, I use these triggers to also feed the trigger to gate, which feeds the clock input of the random task. The real magic of the random task here outputting a five volt difference is that it only triggers the envelope when we get five volts. What this means is we're not getting a note every single time, but rather it's a bit more random than that. So we're getting notes sometimes, and sometimes we're not getting notes because the envelope isn't being triggered with every single step. It's only being triggered by the random task. To finish off the air step module here, this goes into a distortion. The distortion then outputs to this filter here, which is a low pass output. The output of this goes into a three band EQ, I'm just boosting some lows and some highs, and then the output of that goes into a stereo delay. The stereo delay is also tempo synced here. You can see that's coming from the clock out of the sync divider, and then the output of that goes into the eight input mixer here. The filter is also receiving a little bit of modulation. So we've got the frequency mod one here. This is coming from a sample and hold LFO. The reset of this sample and hold is being triggered by the trigger output of the air step. That way, we're making sure that this sample and hold stepping filter movement is in time with the sequence rather than just being random. Then we have the resonance mod here. This is also coming from the same sample and hold LFO here. This way, we're just getting a lot of filter movements and really screechy resonances occasionally and just a lot more movement and life to this patch. With all that put together, let's take a listen to the final result of the first layer of this performance. 
So we can solo out input one of the mixer here and turn up the master and we'll hear just what's coming out of air step. We can get rid of the delay. So as you can hear, it's not a constant note stream of just stuff happening. By utilizing that random task to trigger the envelope, we're getting something that's a bit more musical and varied. One quick note about using the random task here to tie it to an envelope generator is to adjust the probability. Like I said, we'll be diving into the random task in a bit more detail in another video, but the thing to know about the probability control here is that that is going to choose how random things are. If it's less probability, it's going to be the same thing over and over and over. If it's all the way up, it's going to be totally random. So by using probabilities that aren't so crazy high, you can get a more steady stream of values that sounds a bit more human and musical rather than just being totally random. Now that we've got all this stuff out of the way, let's move on and talk about the drums down here because this part is actually pretty simple, it's just a few little added twists. First off, let's talk about the kick drum because this is probably the easiest. As you can see, we've got the trigger input here and that is coming from trigger out A of air step. So for every time I input a trigger here, it's going to send out a trigger and give me my 909 kick sound. Since this is just a very straightforward four on the floor electronic type of feel, I'm just putting a trigger on every other step. The output of the kick here just goes into a three band EQ. I'm adding a little bit of hot end and a little bit of low end. The output of that then goes right up here to the mixer to input two. There's really not much more to the kick sound than that. It's just every other note gets a trigger and then we get a kick drum for that nice steady grooving four on the floor kick pattern. Let's move on to the snare and claps here. So I've layered the snare and claps together. This is just a common trick from kind of the old school beatbox era of creating drum sequences. And you know, it's just a trick that was used a lot in classic drum sequencers. So that's a great tip if you're going for a bit more of an old school vibe is layering the 808 snare and the clap. These guys are receiving some triggers from the clock divider. This clock divider here has the input coming from trigger output A and then is dividing it by two. And then the output of that goes to the trigger in of the snare and claps. What this means is instead of getting a kick and a snare every single time, we're getting a kick and then a kick and a snare, and then a kick and then a kick and a snare. So that's an easy way just to create a very straightforward drum pattern. By messing with the clock divider values, this is a really cool way to get some polyrhythmic interesting sequences. But in this case, we just want something really straightforward and head bobbing. The output of the snare here goes into a distortion with quite a bit of distortion, and then that is output to channel four. The output of the clap here is just going straight out, bypassing the distortion and goes up to the mixer input four. So if we solo that out, you'll hear that snare and that clap. And let's bring in the kick here on two. And that's all there is to creating that really basic straightforward pattern. So now let's talk about the hats because there's two different triggers and I've only got A and B from air step. So how did I get it to trigger the closed and open hat? This is a little trick courtesy of my friend, the one by eight switch. And this is actually a very powerful module once you understand how to use it. If we take a look here, the output of one is going to the closed trigger input and the output of two is going to the open trigger input of the hats. And if you keep an eye on this LED, it's gonna switch here right about now. So that's how I'm changing which input is receiving the trigger information. Even though it's only getting one trigger, it's switching between two separate destinations. The input of the one by eight switch here is coming from trigger output B of the air step module. So you can see here, we've got our kick and then we've got our kick and snare, kick, kick and snare. And then over here on the in-between beats, I've got the hat trigger. To get this to change over, I've used my clock divider here. So the input of the clock divider is also getting the trigger output B and then it's dividing it by eight. And then that is outputting to the step trigger. So that's what changes it between one and two. Since there are only two destinations, I set up this to have only two steps, but you could add more. And this is a great way to create some sequences out of stuff that maybe doesn't have a lot of trigger information, but you want it to regularly cycle through to multiple destinations. With all that said and done, this allows me to hear eight closed hats followed by eight open hats, and that's what generates our final drum sequence. So as you can see, there's really not many modules to this, and there's really not much trigger information, but I'm able to trigger a pretty full drum sequence. Let's bring up our mixer here and take a listen to track three, which is where the hats are going. And we can bring in our claps and our kick. 
and bring in the air stuff. Finally, to close this patch off, I just ran everything through a compressor just to make the little performance here sound a bit more finalized rather than just being a bunch of stuff. By adding a compressor module at the end, it just glues everyone together and makes them hold hands and play nicely. So the output of my mixer here goes to the input of the compressor. I've got a little bit of peak reduction, a little bit of gain, and then that outputs up here to the main output. And that is the end of the story. But as you can hear, by utilizing the air step module, we can generate a whole track, more or less. And by utilizing it on its own, it's a really great way to get some very harmonically rich sounds. And that wraps everything up for this video and for this patch. To learn more about Voltage Modular or to pick it up for yourself, you can head over to cherryaudio.com.